Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Thursday Thought, I want to talk to you about the School of the Prophets. Now, the idea of the School of the Prophets started all the way back with Joseph Smith and the original Church of Jesus Christ. As it was reorganized or organized in the 1800s. And I want to begin with a scripture. This is Doctrines of the Saints 7b. And for Community of Christ, it's going to be 87.3. And in the Salt Lake City Church and their tradition, their Doctrine and Covenants, it's going to be 96, is where section 90, verse 6, is where we're going to start. And here, the Lord is talking to Joseph Smith, Sidney Rigdon, and Frederick G. Williams. And he says that all three of these brothers are equal in the keys of the last kingdom. And then the following verse, it says, and as also through your administration, the keys of the school, the prophets, which I have commanded to be organized, that thereby, thereby they may be perfected in the ministry for the salvation of Zion and the nations of Israel and of the Gentiles, as many as will believe. And it basically talks about, you know, we need to educate people. We need to teach them in the school of the prophets how to be ministers, how to do the duties they've been called to. Now, in our bylaws, it says in Article 2, and you can find our bylaws, by the way, on the website and also in Section 3C of Doctrines of the Saints. In Article 2, it says the purposes of the fellowship, the Church of Jesus Christ and Christian Fellowship, are number one, to establish a Christian church with a school of prophets and with missionary, literature, educational, and all the resources it may deem useful to propagate and practice the full gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and for its service to the community. Now, I've talked before about this idea of moving from the church to the kingdom. Here, in this, this purpose here, we're creating a church and we're creating a school of the prophets. These are two main things that we exist for, reasons for our existence. Now, I want to skip to section 50. And this is a revelation that Christine and I received uh, in, in June of 2020. It talks about the purpose of the Council of Fifty for the Fellowship of Christ. And it says in verse 7, This Council of Fifty shall be organized to run and teach the school of the prophets, as organized by the First Presidency of the Church of Jesus Christ and Christian Fellowship. So I want to I address a couple of things here. One is... As you guys know, about this time last year, people were really pushing me personally to offer worship services. There are people who said that they would help and, you know, got an agenda together, started making worship services. But at the same time, like, I knew people needed them because people were asking for them, but I just didn't feel like I was the person who was supposed to do it. But since no one else was stepping up, I just, I just went ahead and did it. And eventually... And late last year, we got a Sabbath service committee together. And we had several brothers step up to the plate and help out. And you've seen some of them, Devin, James, and Alan, sharing messages. The people I talked to, they, they would say things like, you know, Dave, I've, I've never given a message before. I've never given a talk before. I've never done any public speaking. I've never written a, a sermon before. I don't know where to get content. You know, they would say that, yes, David, you can do this stuff off the cuff. The Lord gives you a scripture and you just start talking about it. But not everybody can do that. And I've been prayerfully trying to figure out what to do. How do we transition from getting away from me doing these to having other people do it? And I realized that the Lord's been telling me the whole time, focus on the school of the prophets. Well, if we have the School of the Prophets, then these people that don't know how to do these things, we can train them up on how to do it. And so because of that, you know, I was praying on it last weekend, and the Lord gave me a revelation. I spoke to Alan about it. I reached out to a couple of different people that are on the committee so they would know what's going on. And basically, you know, back to that purpose. Let me go back here real quick. It says to establish a Christian church. And he school the prophets. So the revelation I received breaks up exactly like it says 
there in our bylaws. The Lord's calling Alan to focus on the organization of the church, to help meet the needs of the spiritually homeless. And he's asking me to do exactly what I was called to do originally, and that is focus on the School of the Prophets, the Council of Fifty, that the leadership will grow out of to help Alan as he's building a home for the spiritually homeless. Alan has been called as the head evangelist to begin the process in taking over and building up the church portion. So we are going to divide and conquer, as they say. And I have put together a path of the deacon. As you can see here, this is based on the book of the law of the Lord, where there are three degrees of the deaconship. And I'm going to get into more classes, and I'm, I'm still writing these classes. And just so you know, the one thing that Alan and I both have prayerfully decided on is that in order to be ordained, you will need, you'll be required to take the Priesthood 101 class, the Introduction to the Priesthood, which is really an introduction to Mormon Kabbalah. And you'll need to take the Temple 101 class, which gets into being ordained as a deacon or a teacher and what it means and the various clothing that you'll need and the endowments that you'll go through. These classes will be free of charge. Beyond this, it's up to Alan as to what classes you will need to take to be a deacon or a teacher or a priest as he is running that side of this movement. For those that really feel called, like I know I am a deacon, I'm, I'm a shepherd, my role is to be a scribe and to assist as a first degree deacon. Well, there's a list of courses here, including a year long internship. You get ordained after the first two classes. And then you're at that point, Alan can start your internship immediately. And then you decide, you know, am, am I going to take these with Alan? Am I going to take these other classes? And You'll notice here that because the person is a scribe, we have things on here like how to use Word or Writer or Google Docs. We, we use Google Docs here with the fellowship, but I'm going to be putting together a class that goes over how to do things with all three of these. So that way, if you're using Writer, by the way, is with uh, LibreOffice. It's an open source office suite. And same thing with uh, Excel, Calc, or Sheets. And we here in the fellowship use a CRM program called Civi CRM. And there really is no training for that right now. And so I'm going to be writing training courses for that so that as someone who is basically in a clerk or an administrator, you will know how to use the technology that you need. At the same time, you're also, this is a, an ecclesiastical position. So therefore, you need to learn what does it mean to be a deacon? How do, how do we use the scriptures? And then I recommend three electives, and there's a group of electives. And you can go through and, and take these courses and get trained up as a deacon. If you feel called to be a steward, a second degree deacon, well, obviously you're going to need to take a couple of the first degree deacon classes. I don't know that you necessarily have to take all of them, but you're going to want, if you're going to take the 102 classes, for example, for Word, Excel, or Civi CRM, then you're going to need to take the 101 classes to get them out of the way. And then again, if you feel called to be a third degree deacon, as a minister, then I'm sure you'll need to take a couple of classes in the first and second degree, and then you'll want to take all of these. And as you complete each of these, you will get a certificate showing that you graduated from the School of the Prophets with a degree, as either a first degree, second degree, or third degree. And if you get all three, then you'll get a special certificate showing that you know you you are a full-fledged deacon that is trained in all these things. And at that point, if you feel called to be a teacher, then you can learn how to train other deacons as a teacher to help come back and teach these courses. And I kind of see this like as a trade school where you're you're doing this to learn how to do these things, but this is obviously not accredited, but you'll have a certificate at the end that shows you're able to do this. Now, you'll notice that there's no counseling classes or anything like that in here, that those would come later. And we are looking for brothers and sisters that have the ability to train people on how to counsel. Now, there are some questions I'm sure that some people have about this, and I'm going to answer all one group of questions with this. There's a brother who has 
a master's degree in theology. He's going to be ordained and receive his endowments this summer. Does he need to go through all of these classes? No, of course not. He has his education. Does he need to take the Priesthood 101 and Temple 101 classes? Yes. He needs to make, we need to make sure that the people that go through these are familiar with Mormon Kabbalah and with the Temple Rituals because you're going to receive the Temple Rituals. Now beyond this, he is welcome to take whatever courses he desires if he desires to do so. Because of the fact that he has a Catholic background, he, will, he may want to take certain classes in order to understand the Latter-day Saint movement better. If he wants to take the priesthood classes to understand Kabbalah better, because the priesthood classes, anything that they, that if a class says priesthood, it is a Kabbalistic class. It is a Mormon Kabbalah class, to be clear. So if he feels, you know, impressed by the spirit of taking those, he's welcome to. But he's already got a master's degree. So, you know, same thing. If you have a an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree, you, you're not, you're, you don't need to take the Word or Excel classes. If you are an IT person who works in CIVI CRM all the time, well, I may ask you to actually rewrite the training classes. You might be able to do a better job than I have. But you obviously won't need to take those courses. So not everyone has to take every single class. If you have the practical experience and can demonstrate that in one way or another, then you don't need to take it to get your certificate. The internships, you know, that's entirely up to Allen, or if you belong to a different church, then basically that would be to be service in your church. Those that are members, for example, of the, the Salt Lake City Church, they spent two years as a deacon in the church passing sacrament. So there'll be an interview process asking them what did they learn at the age of 12, and 14, 12 to 14 when they were doing this so that they can basically just, just you know pass out of this. But it should be understood that deacons in most other churches, I was going to say Community of Christ and, and Protestant churches and so on and so forth, but pretty much every other church except for the Brighamite churches, they don't ordain 12-year-olds. And so the idea of a deaconship is more like what's mentioned in the Doctrine and Covenants and the Book of the Law of the Lord than it is how it's practiced in the Salt Lake City Church. And I'm not trying to condemn that. I think they have a great program. I love the fact that they keep their teenagers active in their church through the priesthood and allow them to grow in the priesthood as they're growing up. I, I think that's very, very wise. And I see no reason why a 12-year-old can't go through these programs if they feel called to do so. That said, there's also no reason to put these, these brothers, because they don't learn any sisters, through the deacon internship. If you belong to the community of Christ and you've been a deacon for a year, you don't need to go through the deacon internship. Same thing with you know teacher, priest, etc. Our main thing is we want to make sure that you have the experience doing the job and you're not just thrown out to the wind and said, hey, here's a book. Best of luck to you. We want to give you the, the tools that you need to be successful in the calling the Lord has given you. That's the whole point of the School of Prophets. So at this point, now our needs are even greater because we need teachers. And we need people to help Alan as he's building up the church portion of the kingdom of God. And I also want to tell you that the School of the Prophets here, the website, by the way, is Opulum, O-P-U-L-U-M, which is a hybrid of open curriculum. It's opulum.org. The point of this is also cross-pollination. I've already invited other brothers and sisters that, that have their own classes. If you want to put your stuff on the School of the Prophets, reach out to me, info at cjccf.org. Let's talk. This, this isn't my school with only my classes or even the fellowship school. It's just the fellowship's classes. Anyone that wants to have any sort of religious training courses to offer people, this is for you, and I've already put together a training video on how to get your, your courses on to the website. So, please, reach out. We need teachers, and they don't all have to be members of the Fellowship of Christ. And if you feel called to be the Council of 50, the Council of 50, you don't have to be a Latter-day Saint. You know, there's a lot of Baptists right now talking about Mormonism. If you're a Baptist and you feel called to you know, put together a Bible class here on the School of Prophets, reach out. Let's do it. 
We want to do cross-pollination. That's what ecumenical movements do. This School of the Prophets is an ecumenical school. It is non-denominational. So real quickly, I want to give a shout-out to Christine and thank her for putting together the logo. That's Moroni blowing on a shofar, a ram's horn. I love it. I, I really appreciate her taking the time back in 2020 to, to make that logo for us. And I am going to apologize to anyone that is still watching this video that came on here thinking that I was going to talk about the School of the Prophets as some sort of, I don't know, philosophical idea and not an actual School of the Prophets. Um, if you're still around, thank you for sticking through in, in this entire video. I want to bear you my testimony and, and leave you with this thought. The Lord has called many people to do a lot of, of different things. In, in his kingdom. And, and in his kingdom are many churches. And I know that as a people, training is something that we kind of seem to put on the wayside. I know growing up, I didn't really get any training in the priesthood. I was ordained an elder. I had no idea how to give a blessing. I was just told to put my hand on someone's head and use oil when oil was required. I didn't really know how to. I, I figured it out. But there was no one there to, to, to really talk to me about how to give a blessing how to <laughs> I still remember when I was the first time I passed the sacrament as a deacon I, I didn't know what to do I sat there and I said what do I do so you just take a tray and you walk to your aisle which which aisle is mine and they're like well it depends on where you're sitting I said well I'm sitting here and so they had to get this little chart out no one had explained to me how it was supposed to go I don't want the fellowship and, and I'm not saying every ward is like that and every experience is like that because I can tell you that it wasn't like that after that. As new people came in, I was always really big on, hey, let's show this new guy the chart so he knows where to walk here. We need to make sure that the people the Lord has called have the support that they need. I'm not here to demand anything of anyone. I'm not here to command people to do anything. I am a facilitator. The Lord has given me 20 years of experience in adult education and training people. I want to put it to good use, making sure you feel comfortable and you feel confident in what you're doing. So my Thursday thought for you is, how can the School of the Prophets help you? How can what Alan is doing in building up the church, the church portion of the kingdom of God, help you? How can, how can we, here as a fellowship, assist you and help you grow closer to God personally, and in your ministry. And when you have your answer, let me know. Because that's what we're here for. So that's my Thursday thought, and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.